15 seconds? Alright. <laughs> Ever had these Chuck Norris jokes? They're hilarious! Chuck Norris can pull a perfect game with a balloon. Death once had a near Chuck Norris experience. <laughs> oh man, I wish I was mature. Alright, ready? Shalom! Elliot King Cohen, Jews News Briefs, May 31st, 2011, 27th day of year on the Hebrew calendar. We have an absolutely jam-packed show today. We are live from Jews News World Headquarters. Jerusalem is actually the sponsor of today's show. Tonight is Jerusalem Day, the 44th anniversary of when we reunited Jerusalem. Uh, before we start, I'd like to read a quote from Grains of Sand, the book I'm doing a book review for. Isn't it crazy? During the night, the Arabs fire mortars at us, set roadside bombs, and try and infiltrate our communities. Yet during the day, we hire them to do our gardening work and our stores and help us with our household chores. I thought that was a very interesting quote from this book. It's an amazing book, Grains of Sand. Please go and get it. I'm here live with Ralph the Puke Bag. Uh, let's dive in because we have an absolutely awesome, awesome show today. So today in Jewish history, Shabtai Svi proclaimed himself the Jewish Messiah on this date in 1675. This was an absolute disaster. Jews from every social class, economic class, actually believed he was the Messiah. He ended up converting to Islam because the Sultan of Turkey said, either prove that you're Messiah or the death penalty. So he said, well, since I'm not Messiah, I'll actually just convert to Islam. This was an absolute disaster for the Jewish people. Uh, so if you're out there and you think that you're the Messiah, think again. The real Messiah is not coming. He will be coming soon, Bezat Hashem. Alright, so for today's uh, Jewish quote, this actually comes from Hitler, and I'm saying this because it's a very, very important quote. Uh, Hitler says that the struggle for war domination is between, is between me and the Jews, all else is meaningless. The Jews have inflicted two wounds on this world, circumcision for the body and conscious for the soul. I come to free mankind from their shackles. That's a very uh, important quote. That is what we brought to this world. Circumcision, and the feeling of guilt and remorse, having a heart, that is what the Jewish people are. All right, so for the Torah tip of the day, we all know what teshuva is, it's repentance. How do we get closer to God? Three ways. Sincere regret for past misconduct, an actual confession of what we've done wrong, and a firm decision never to do that again. That is how a Jew becomes closer to God. I hope everyone will take this lesson seriously and do some self-reflection. All right, today's top story is an amazing one. Uh, Jerusalem Arabs, a large percentage of them, are saying to Israel, don't give away your sovereignty. Beep, 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 back up, let me read that again. Jerusalem Arabs are saying to Israel, don't give away your sovereignty. Any poll of Jerusalem uh, Arabs, any poll of the Muslims living in Israel, overwhelmingly do not want a Palestinian state. Why? Because in Israel they have freedom, they have rights, they can vote. And a Palestinian state, they have to worry about being hung up by a telephone pole, about honor killings, being kidnapped in the night, tortured, beat, whatever. Um, this is something that needs to get more oppressed, which is why I'm doing this as the top story. When Muslims themselves don't want a Muslim state, there's a reason for that. They want the democratic freedom you know, the freedom of being able to walk down the street and not having to worry about your cousin, you know, jumping out from a bush and killing you because, you know, you happen to look at this girl from like 600 yards away. This is important. This is today's top story. Uh, it was being discussed in the Knesset. I need to know what everyone has to think about this. That the overwhelming majority of the Muslims, the Arabs, that live in the areas that were supposedly going to become a Palestinian state are saying, wait a minute. No! We don't want this! We want freedom! We want to, want to live like normal human beings. So please tell me what you think about this. This is a very, very important topic. That is our poll question today. What do you think about... <laughs> that Muslims not wanting a Muslim state, they want a Jewish state. Okay? So yesterday's question was, um, what do you think about the IDF buying non-lethal weapons for violent protests that they know are coming? So I'm only going to read one quote because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, it's sad and weird that the world views Israel as a bully, but also as someone that they can push around. Doesn't make sense. No matter how hard we try to look humane, like using non-lethal weapons to fight off violent individuals, the world still criticizes it. I thought that was an absolutely genius quote. Thank you for everyone that, that uh, responds every single day to our poll question. Uh, these are important. Please uh, comment right under the YouTube video and I'll read them on the show. Uh, moving right along. In a 
an Iranian cleric who is actually the spiritual advisor of Ahmadinejad, is urging his followers to continue suicide attacks against Israelis, including killing children. Might I remind you that Ahmadinejad is weeks, months, a year, whatever away from getting a nuclear bomb. And this is his spiritual advisor. I have a spiritual advisor. He's called my rabbi. He tells me to give charity. This guy's spiritual advisor says, blow up children. Everyone needs to wake up and realize that Iran is a monster, monster problem in this world. Alrighty, moving right along. Ah, our enemies are preparing for Noxa Day. I know you're thinking, wait, did they just have Noxa Day? No. Now they just added an S instead of a B. So hundreds of thousands of people are joining Facebook campaigns marking the setback of the Six Day War. And that's what we're celebrating tonight is when Jerusalem was actually reunited. So the IDF is saying, wait a minute, since we completely bungled everything the first time, we're going to deploy larger forces along the border. Uh, the Palestinians and their supporters are preparing to launch, an, launch another multi-pronged assault on Israel's borders this week to mark Naqsa Day. <laughs> we know this is going to happen. We have now been told that the IDF is purchasing non-lethal weapons when people from enemy countries are planning on overtaking our borders. Do you guys realize that this is an act of war? You know, if you live in country A, you can't just run into country B and not expect any sort of punishment, unless that country B is Israel. We hand you lollipops, cotton candy, and we'll probably pay for your bus ticket back to Syria or Lebanon. This is just insane. You know, our days of being the doormat of the world need to be over. And the idea of leadership in this country is beyond pathetic. You know, D stands for defense. The best defense is offense, meaning when someone sets up a Facebook page saying, you know what, we're going to storm Jerusalem and we're going to storm Israel, you, you actually take that seriously. This is just a complete joke. This is just an everyday thing that I have to discuss on the show, whether it's a flotilla, whether it's rock throwing. Oh, speaking of rock throwing, uh, an Israeli woman got hit uh, in the head from a uh, stone throwing near Hebron. And for anyone out there that thinks that stones are just this mild whatever, well, I have a very good friend who lost a cousin, an infant cousin, uh, because he got hit in the head with a rock. So don't tell me that rocks are like this, oh, it's, you know, it's just a rock. You know, throwing dirt, fine. Rocks kill. Anyone throwing a rock, I don't care if they're four years old or 50 years old, should be arrested for murder that would stop the rock throwing. How much, how many more times do we have to go through this nonsense with our enemies? Speaking of enemies, Abbas is now talking with Islamic Jihad. He already made a pact with Hamas. Now he's talking with Islamic Jihad. And the world still wants us to talk to him as a peace partner. This guy in his doctoral thesis said that the Holocaust did not exist. Okay? This is who the world thinks is our peace partner. It's just nauseating. Alright, for my friend who wants actual happy news, we're starting a new segment on the show called Happy Time. Happy! Alright, so Happy Time is Jerusalem's reunification! Back in 1967, the brave soldiers of Israel reunited the western part of Jerusalem with the Jordanian-controlled eastern part of Jerusalem, and now we have supposedly a unified Jerusalem. Although that is not the case because uh, the Knesset now is discussing why many parts of Jerusalem police are afraid to go to, the government is afraid to uh, go to, it's pretty much in the hands of the quote-unquote Palestinian Authority. Uh, let's actually do something nice for the soldiers that lost their lives, that were injured, uh, for the families that suffered losses, and actually take control of our own country for a change. This is just getting absolutely nauseating. Uh, if you want to say that Jerusalem's reunited, then build in every single part of our capital. I don't care if it's east, west, north, whatever. Jerusalem is ours. It is not mentioned one time in the Quran. Jerusalem has never been and will never be a Muslim city. It is the Jewish capital of the Jewish homeland. Alright, so that is our happy story of the day. 
Now more happy news. Uh, Boris Gelfon won his latest match at the Candidates Tournament in Russia, which is the Chess Championship, bringing him closer to winning the World Chess Championship. Israel won a silver medal at the 2008 Chess Olympiad. I know what you're saying. Chess players are the biggest dorks in the world. That is not true. It is a game of intelligence, and I love playing chess with my album. Okay, moving right along. Ah, the IDF is moving to more comfortable combat uniforms. For years, IDF soldiers have complained about combat uniforms that they have to wear during exercises, operations, and on their bases. I've seen these uniforms. The belt doesn't really tie tightly. I'm very, you know, I'm a sickler for that. Uh, the boots look a little bulky. The whole uniform, whatever. So in response, the IDF Technical and Logistics Directorate recently decided to replace the combat uniforms with those worn by U.S. Marines in Afghanistan and in Iraq. So my goal is to get one of these uniforms and model it on an upcoming show. Oh, sorry. Shalom. Hello, Ima. I know my sister's birthday is coming up. Mom, you're so mad at something that happened 24 years ago. If you didn't want me to eat her cake, you could have hit it a little bit higher. I know I got on seven chairs to get the cake, but you could have put it in the attic or something. I have to go. It's my show. All right. Oh, I did eat my sister's first birthday cake. I was seven years old. Um, she burst into tears <laughs> at her party as they opened up the cake, and half the cake was gone. So, sister, my bad. Uh, I've been apologizing for this for 24 years. It never ends. My email always brings it up every time June rolls. All right, on to some more news. Uh, oh, E. coli is hitting Europe. Let's just do a little boop, 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 backtrack. Europe is trying to ban Jewish kosher slaughter. Kosher slaughter has to do with food. Where is E. coli found? Food. Uh, there's something in the Torah, goes a little something like, I will bless those that bless you, and those that curse you will be cursed. Or as we like to call it, mida connected mida, meaning measure for measure. Or as Justin Timberlake likes to call it, So if Europe wants to, I don't know, help themselves out, they can lay off kosher slaughter. It's the most humane form of slaughter that is scientifically proven. You know, Europe never really likes to let facts get in the way, but there is a measure for measure formula in this world, and bad things happen when bad things happen to the Jews. So treat your Jews nicely, and these things won't happen. And as a final note for today, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu says that there is nothing we can do to stop a quote-unquote Palestinian declaration of statehood. Uh, a, that's not true. We could say to them, if you declare a state, we're annexing all of the land that you're declaring a state on. Then maybe they would think about not declaring a state. But he also said, if the UN can just declare a state, they can also declare the world flat. Which the UN is perfectly capable of doing. They're already saying that global warming is like a, you know, a big threat up there, which we know is a complete farce. So everyone, use your brains. Watch the show, post the show, share the show. Let's get 100,000 people per episode because really no one is reporting on the real news. No one is reporting on you know, divisive issues except Jews news briefs. Because remember, it is not news unless it's Jews news. Shalom. And happy 44th unification of Yerushalayim.